So we've got the front end of our project set up here. And then now it's time to work on the back end of the project. So the back end is the side that does all the data updates, pull data, you know, business logic, all that stuff that happens in the program on the back end. And so we're going to do that using Visual Studio. So let's open Visual Studio, our old friend, and we're going to create a new project and we're going to search for the template API. So search for API. And then what we're looking for is ASP.NET Core Web API, C Sharp. All right, so not native AOT, not F Sharp. We're looking for ASP.NET Core Web API. Select that, next. We can give it whatever name we want to. Um, I'll call it API Fun. But the important part here is that we go find the right directory. So I'm going to come into my repos folder where the rest of my .NET projects are and where we created that folder. I'm going to go into the full stack fun folder and then into the back end folder. And that's the one I'm going to want to select. Now we can uh, place the solution to the project in the same directory or we don't have to. It'll just create another subdirectory called API fun underneath that. I think for this, I'm going to put them both in the same folder. This really comes down to personal preference. And so I'm going to say next, and then I'm going to use .NET 8, take those default options, and say create. So this is going to build a little project for us. All right, so there's our API default project. Now when I click on this, Let's see what it even does. If I run this, okay, so it's got a get weather forecast button. If I click on that, okay, I don't really know what this is doing. How about let's look around the project and just see if there's anything familiar to us. So there's a weather forecast CS. And if you're saying this looks a lot like a model, you would be correct. That's exactly what it is. So we've got a class here that's got some data in it, and we can read through this and see what it's doing. Um, you know, a, a nullable string there, we recognize that. This is a little lambda saying the result of the temperature F is going to be going out and doing this little conversion and, and getting the, the number. So whatever's in temperature C, go ahead and convert it, and that's what we're going to put into temperature F and uh, so on and so forth. So we can go through and read this code, figure out what it's doing. I do have a program CS file, and if I go look at that, I am importing some services. Some of this is familiar to me, some of it's not. Um, I have an appsettings.json like we've done in the past. Uh, API, HTTP, I don't know what that is, right? I do have a controller, so let's go into the controller and see if we can find anything familiar here. And so we do have an action. Now it looks a little bit different than what we've done in the past. There's a get, and uh, we can see that they're setting up just a, a static string here that's got some different uh, descriptions of the temperature in it that it's going to use to randomly select. Um, we do have a, a constructor here, and so uh, it's, it's just reading in a logger. And so anyway, some of this is looking familiar, some of it's not. Now, what we're going to find out is what this is doing is building an API controller, right? Or an API. And so this particular API is called Weather Forecast. Now, let's go ahead and run this again. And if I go to this address, and if I type in the name of the controller, so in this case, Weather Forecast, it's going to return to me a JSON object with five temperatures in it. And so this is just a little, again, it, it, it's giving us some structure to work with as we build our .NET API. And so in this case, what this is doing is it's got a weather forecast uh, controller, which is what's determining this, this address that we're going to, weather forecast. And in here, there's a get. So if we're getting this weather forecast, then it's going to do this. And you can imagine that someday we're going to have a post that does something else. And so um, we don't need to bring in the iLogger um, necessarily for what we're doing. Uh, and, and this summaries is only to help here where it goes and gets a random, random 
summary. So each time you refresh this page, it's building a different pretend uh, prediction of the of the weather. So for the forecast, and so this is just giving us a little example. Well, let's go in and, and build one of our own. So see if we can get this figured out. One of the things that's uh, impressed me about BYU is the Marriott food. <laughs> it's just amazing to me as I walk around the building, as I'm around different people, um, in the elevators, in the atrium, wherever I'm at, how much food is in this building constantly. It feels like as a student, you could just go from event to event, get a donut in the morning, go to some info session in the atrium thing, you know, meet with some people, get some lunch, go to an event at night, get some dinner. It just feels like there is constant food. And so we're going to build a little app that, or an API, well, our whole app will be surrounding this, where we get, where we rate the food that comes in to, to know what's the best food that comes into the Marriott building. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, first of all, a folder under here, so API um, fun. Now, just to prove this point, we could call it models, but we're not doing MVC now, so we don't need to call it models. I'm just going to call it data. But in this data folder, I'm going to add a file, so a class, a new item, a class called food. Well, let's call it Marriott food to be more specific. Marriott food. All right, so we'll call it Marriott Food inside that data folder, and it's gonna set up the little structure for us. And so in here, I'm just gonna go in and put some information that might be relevant to us as we build our little food rating database. All right, so let's come in and I'll first say public. We need an ID, so I'll call it food ID, and I can put my get and set on that. Okay, what else will we want to know? Well, we need to know what event it is, so public, string what is the event name and we can get and set that all right public string who is the vendor of the food would might be important to know so vendor uh, name get and set that and then one other piece of information let's say what is the the public string uh, oh sorry excuse me the public int let's get the the food rating. All right, so let's get the food rating, get and set. Okay, so we've got here our structure. We can save that. We've got here our structure of our, what's eventually gonna become our database to be able to set up. And so uh, this information, we're going to take and translate into a database and then use that database to store the information and, and pull from the database to go update our front end on the React site. And so this is the beginning of our little API with this little model, which a model is just nothing more than a C-sharp class, right? Um, that has some data that we're going to store, but we're gonna use this to link up to that front end. And so pay attention to these names, they're important. And uh, what we're gonna do next is go in and build a database to be associated with them. So. We'll do that in the next video. Spencer out.